Italian guys, welcoming you back. Um, in today's video, I had a click actually this morning as I was doing puja and I wanted to share with you guys and it's about what is destruction and why is destruction bad? Now, not the destruction of Shiva, which is a rejuvenation dimension, uh, but the destruction which is just meant to destroy for the sake of destroying. So with this, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So, yes, the first thing I wanted to share was like what Swamiji was sharing. Uh, one of the uh, five phases of Paramashiva, five phases of Sadashiva, is uh, Rudra, Rudra Agora, sorry, Agora. And Agora is responsible for the destruction. But when we talk about destruction, destruction actually is a wrong uh, translation for the Sanskrit word. And it's more like rejuvenation, meaning destroying something stagnant to allow something vibrant to happen again. So it is basically responsible for the rejuvenation of the universe, or we can even say to a certain extent, I mean, that's what I, um, what I feel perhaps recycling. You know, he recycles the spaces which are stagnant um, into a new space which is vibrant of life. So, so that's the first thing. So now the click I had was about destruction. Why do people, in each, for instance, in our present situation, some people are attacking and with the intention of destroying uh, the work that Swamiji is doing and the community that Swamiji has built and uh, yes, the Sangha in which I belong. Now, I was contemplating on like, what is the source of that? Some people, they, they say that, you know, one of the reasons why they, they want to destroy is they say this um, Swamiji is not an authentic guru and, um, and because of that, he should be destroyed. And I, we have nothing against anybody who follows Swamiji. People who are following Swamiji are good people, but Swamiji is an evil person. And as long as Swamiji is destroyed, then everything is fine. And that is basically the fundamental understanding from which they operate. And some of the reasons they say is that, you know, he manipulates people, he controls people, and you don't have the freedom of being who you want, who you are, who you want to be, your individual self, your freedom, freedom of expression, and all that kind of thoughts. So this is basically the fundamental thought currents that they cherish and that they believe in, in this situation. So now I had a click regarding especially for instance um, Guru Droha which is mentioned in the scriptures in the Guru Gita and other scriptures Guru Droha is basically going against the Guru and by going against the Guru um, it means like wanting ill having ill thought currents towards the Guru and the purpose of Guru and why is it bad? Well, basically because the Guru is not a person. It's a reflection of your inner self that you uh, cherish through, um, through someone or not through someone, through the Guru, through the, through the, 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 the Guru who embodies <laughs> the Guru Tattwa. Um, and if you go against that, then you go to, against yourself. That is why Guru Droha is the ultimate sin and it's not it's not something external like we have to understand the context of what it means guru droha means you going against yourself your soul in some of the slokas of the of the scriptures i remember um a sloka i think the third sloka of ishavashya upanishad where they say atma atmahana means killing of the soul that's what it means guru droha guru is a projection of yourself if you destroy the Guru, you destroy yourself. Um, if you see the Guru as the Guru, obviously some people will say Guru, but it's meaningless. They use the word, but they have no context, no space behind it. So that's, that's not the Guru, that is something else. Um, so anyways, the click I had was, see the people, they might feel, sometimes they feel like, um, you know, um, Guru is against me. Um, he's not allowing me to blossom, I don't have the freedom of expression, um, and all these thought currents um, some people cherish. What I realized, and what I feel is what they fail to realize, is that 
everything is a fear until the complete Paramashivoham experience is blossoms inside the being, everything is a fear. There is a fear. So for instance, I've, I've heard some people saying that the fear of Guru Droha, being afraid of committing the sin of going against the Guru, without understanding what Guru Droha actually means, without even seeking, I'm not saying understanding, at least some basic seeking towards it, or trying to, trying to look into that, instead of coming to your own conclusion and freezing yourself in that. Um, that fear of committing Guru Droha. So then they cherish, so what they generate that fear, right? Because we are generating everything that we experience. And that is the first step that we fail to realize most of the time. We forget that we are creating this. That fear is created by nobody else but ourselves. Not only it is created by ourselves, but it is cherished, it is worshipped by ourselves. If you have fear, of, for instance, of committing sin or fear of public speaking or whatever fear it is, it is a fear that you have created for yourself and it is a fear that you keep feeding. If you are, if you have afraid, if you are afraid of if whatever, you created the fear of um, public speaking and you feel like, no, 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 I'm afraid that I cannot do anything. Then you should stop cherishing the fear. How to stop cherish the fear? Slowly, slowly start to speak to people and to a bigger, bigger crowd. Stop cherishing the fear of public. So start to engage with the public. So that's what I mean by, or at least that's what I understand when it comes to say, cherishing, um, cherishing these um, self-generated uh, emotions or experiences, thought currents. Now, they create the fear of committing sin, deep fear, strong fear, intense fear, then they cherish it, means they never attend to it, they just consider it as yes I am afraid of this, this is terrible and they never look into it, they don't even look into what is the nature of that fear, where is that fear coming from, there is no seeking, nothing is there, just okay I am afraid that's all. And then automatically what happens, we project that experience in the outside world. So then that fear is projected on the Guru because fear of Guru Droha. So that fear is projected on the Guru. Then that whole process happens without awareness because that's just how it is and that is why everything is a reflection of us. Then when they see that fear in the, if for instance, if they see fear against Guru Droha, then they'll start to fight with Guru thinking that they're fighting their fear. Or maybe they don't even think that. Maybe they just think Guru is evil and they fight the Guru. But the blind spot, the huge blind spot is, it is the fear that you have generated, you have cherished, you have projected, and once it is projected and you see it outside, you fight with it outside with, without having the awareness that you created the whole thing. So in the whole process, you will destroy your Guru-Disciple relationship, that is Guru Droha, Destroying the Guru-Disciple relationship is Guru Droha. So they, you'll destroy the Guru-Disciple relationship and then you'll feel like, okay, I'm not afraid. Hari, it's like, what example I can give? You have a fear of boss. You cannot stand the boss. You fight the boss. You leave the boss and you feel, I am free from this person. Then you go to another job. I think the same problem you're going to have with this boss is going to happen at some point with the other job also. Because it is you who is projecting your fears onto things outside or things that you consider outside. It is us. So we have to look and that is why completion is so important. What is completion? Is realizing that we are the source of it. When Swamiji says relive, if you have an experience of fear, relive it as if you were at that time, the way you were at that time with the thinking, mental setup and physical setup and everything. If you were three years old and you, were, you got an experience where you got really scared, then you relive that and experience that fear and, and just realize that it is a self-generated experience, nothing else. So, so that's the big blind spot. And then, so coming back to the Guru Droha thing, 
not only they will destroy their guru relationship, means they will commit guru droha, they will commit atmahana, means destruction of the soul, of the self. I mean, the self cannot be destroyed, but you can decide to never align to it or to disconnect from it more. That is what I understand as Guru Droha and Atmahana. So they will disconnect from their self more. How do they disconnect from themselves? Because they cherish that fear at a much higher intensity. In, in the process of destroying the Guru-Disciple relationship, what are you investing in? You're investing in your fear. You're not investing in the Guru-Disciple relationship which is supposed to bring you beyond fears, beyond everything. But because we fail to see that this fear is self-generated and then projected, and then once it is projected, we see it and we decide to fight against it, this is complete silliness. That's why we have to take responsibility. The fear is happening inside. And you have an opportunity to complete with it when you are with the Guru. Because the Guru will always align you to that, to complete that. In the outside world, you might project your fear on your boss, on somebody in the street, or whatever it is, your wife or your husband, whatever it is. But the problem is that person will not constantly remind you to compete with yourself. They will also project their fears on you and you guys will be stuck in your delusion where you will be fighting with your own self-projected fear through the other body and vice versa. A husband will fight with wife because he projects his fear onto the wife and then fights with his fears and the wife projects her fears on the husband and she fights with her she fights with the husband not realizing that she's actually just fighting with her own fear so the whole process is you have to be reminded that it is coming from you and you have to stop cherishing it if you no longer want to experience fear in your life you have to stop creating it you have to stop cherishing it and the guru is always reminding you of that so if you are destroying your guru disciple relationship you're destroying the only relationship which has the purpose of helping you complete with the root of your problems, of your patterns. For instance, fear. And not only they will destroy their connection with the Guru, but they will invite and support other people to destroy their connection with the Guru because they're so blind. See, yeah, they are so blind about the fact that it is a self-generated fear which they have to attend in their inner space and not in the outer space because they fail to take responsibility for the inner space they fight with the outer space so intensely they are so convinced that they are correct that they will inspire everybody who has any form of listening uh, towards them to fight against outside but the problem is is that that person and everybody who is following that person whomever that person is they're all failing to see and taking responsibility and having the awareness that any form of problem you see outside of you is generated by you inside your inner space in the first place so yes that's the click i had uh, during puja this morning guys so i'm very happy to share that with you um, share your comments and like subscribe check the description below there's an amazing content there and i'll see you guys in the next video